Greetings and good day to you. I hope you're well today. Today is a video all about my favourite wines I've made this year. And maybe a couple I've made last year, but they're so brilliant I wanted to include them in this year's roundup of my all time favourite wines of 2019. So why don't you join me for a quick review of my favourite wines? Coming in at number one is banana wine. This wine is fantastic. Bananas are on the shelves all the time, year round, and also you can buy them pretty darn cheaply if you can find them in the half price section when they go a bit brown in your local supermarket. Brilliant, buy them, the browner the better. Banana wine is also a brilliant base wine. You can spice it up, you can have different flavorings, you can use it as a good all round base to a lot of other wines. But if you can master the art of banana wine, it opens up the doorway to a heap more possibilities. The only downside of banana wine is that it takes so long to mature, about a year before it is perfect. And banana wine does throw a lot of sediment. So you do need to keep on top of your racking and removing that sediment from the banana wine. Overall, I really rate it. In at number two is a recipe I created, and it is mushroom wine. You don't normally think of mushrooms as something you could make a wine from. They're not really a fruit. They're not a vegetable. They don't have much juice. They don't have much wineness to them. But they do create a wonderful oaked Chardonnay style wine, which is brilliant as a table wine. It complements so many different varieties of meal. Meats to your ducks, to your fishes, to your seafood to puddings, desserts, or just brilliant on its own. And the colour in mushroom wine is golden. And also, another benefit is it's such an unusual wine to offer your guests. They will be amazed that this wine came from mushrooms. They'll ask you for the recipe, they'll be asking for a few bottles to take home with them. I think that's a con, or is it a pro? Only downside of mushroom wine is you do need a fair amount of mushrooms to make a gallon. It can push the cost up slightly, but it is well worth it. At number three now, it is carton juice wine. Wine made from cartons of natural juices, like your oranges, your apples, your prunes, your pears, your plum juices. The great thing about these cartons is they are available all year in every local shop and don't need a great deal of knowledge to open the cartons and ferment them. And also, there are so many varieties of carton out there. You can let your creativity run wild. And these wines are also really quick to mature. You can start it on a Monday, and in two weeks' time, and on the Friday, Saturday, it's drinkable. It's that fast and that easy. The main downside of the carton juice wines is that they are so easy to make you can easily get lost in only making carton juice wines and never venture into the more adventurous types of well, mushroom or seaweed wine. And my fourth favourite is potato wine. Potato wine is the iconic wine that everyone expects you to make when you say you make your own country wines or your own garden allotment wines. Oh yeah, it's going to be potato wine. I had that during the war when I was... Yeah. It is so iconic. You put a glass of potato wine in front of someone, they know it's a proper country wine. So it's always worth having a few gallons on standby just to appease those people who haven't explored further wines in the country range. This wine, the potato wine, has such a strong kick to it. People make vodka or whiskey from potatoes. It's really lends itself well to a strong dessert wine or an after dinner tipple where you can just sip on it by the fire keep yourself warm on a cold winter's night downside of the potato wine is that it does take a long time to mature at least a year and another downside that some of my friends have found out is that it is a very strong wine it doesn't taste it but it does have that kick so forewarn your guests it's one to pace yourself with. It's not a glutton wine, as much as the taste lends itself to be. And the potato wine also throws a fair amount of sediment, so you really have to be on top of racking it often. 
until it's clear. And wine number five, I think it's five, is bland. Bland is a fantastic rich bodied wine made out of fermented whey. It's full, full bodied and smooth as anything. And bland is a great wine to experiment with. It's unusual, it has that novelty factor. People wouldn't expect they're drinking fermented milk. And again, that could be a negative. Some people are a bit put off by the thought that they're drinking a year old yogurt in a bottle that's been turned into alcohol. And I can see why that might put a few people off drinking bland. It's not vegan and it's not dairy free. So if your guests are vegan or dairy free or lactose intolerant, this type of wine, the bland, is not one for your table. All of these recipes are linked down in the description below and also in the pinned comment. So you can find out how to make them and how to enjoy them. Number six on my list of my top, top wines of the year is mead. I know mead isn't technically a wine, but it's something that I make and something that I'm really passionate about. And when I'm talking about mead, I mean all meads are in this category. I could do another video about my top favourite meads and fundamentally it would be all of them because every mead is spectacular. That rich honey flavour really lends itself well to a glass and they are so iconically pagan and viking and have such deep heritage. They are fantastic. So if you haven't tried a mead before, make one. They are really easy to make and they are exceptionally tasty and people don't often get to drink mead so if you offer someone a bottle of mead it will far outweigh the weight of a bottle of wine and earn you a lot of favours. The downside of meads is that they do take about a year to mature plus then the time they take to ferment and finish off so you're talking a good year and a half before they are good enough quality to impress people with. Of course, if you are impatient, you can drink them sooner. It's not a sin. You aren't going to be struck down by the gods or goddesses because you're drinking your mead early. Some people prefer their mead early. But honestly, the longer you leave it, the better. And wine number on the list is rose petal wine. This is a superb wine. It is summer in a glass. It is Turkish delight with all the embodiment of rose hidden you. It is delightful. Definitely, definitely one of my absolute favourite wines to make. I've also made a rose petal mead, which I've actually tried yet, but it's smelling and looking beautiful it is. It is also so easy to make. Only downside of rose petal wine is that it is very seasonal. It's best to pick those rose petals when they are fresh, when they are first out, when they have the most aroma to them and when they are in their fine, fine form. So you have quite a short window. However, you can also use dried rose petals for a very similar wine. But I do think fresh is best. And now, number, I think it's eight, is the one I'm drinking now because it's my favourite, is rice and raisin wine. Cheers. So many benefits to this wine. First of all, it is awesome. Second, it is so easy to make in a five or ten gallon batch. The ingredients are cheap. The ingredients are available all year long. The ingredients are available everywhere, anywhere. Rice and raisin wine also goes with pretty much every meal and every event. It goes with your meats, your fishes, your lambs, your curries, your stews. It goes well on its own. And above all, it's such a great party wine. It's light, it's refreshing. It carries such a great flavour to it. And another thing that makes this a great party wine is that it matures really, really quickly. It ferments really fast, it matures quickly. It is ready within a month. So if you ever have to cater for a big party and you have three weeks notice, four weeks notice, what wine are you going to make? Rice and raisin is it. It's a crowd pleaser. It is delightful. It is easy. It is cheap. It waters a lot of people for minimal cost and minimal effort. Why? Because it's nice and mineral. Yeah. 
and a very good point by my wife there. She said it's a great party wine because it feels familiar. It is not a novelty wine like a bland or a mushroom. You take a sip of it. And you wouldn't know it's a country wine. The rice adds the sweetness and the raisins add that familiar tone of this is a wine. This is a wine I like. This is a wine I'm going to carry on drinking all night. And people do. People aren't put off by rice and raisin. If you didn't label it as rice and raisin and bottled it as a wine, people would think it is a wine. Like a Riesling. So they are my top eight wines to make from 2019. One wine I wouldn't make in 2020, looking forward, is red kidney bean wine and also Brussels sprout wine. They're the two I don't suggest you make, but the rest of them are fantastic. If you want the recipes for any of my wines I've mentioned, as I said, they're down in the description or up by here. So give them a click, give them a watch, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Now, enjoy those wines because I am. Bye bye.